Tori with Feathertail Fiber Arts and I am going to show you guys um, kind of a repurposing video of what to do if you have some old fiber that has been sitting in your stash for a while and you're just not in love with it anymore. Maybe you never were in love with it but you're keeping it because it's fiber and you don't want to throw it out, you know. I am going to rip this apart. I've already started, that's why this looks very small. Um, but I've already started separating it out and I'm going to show you how I'm going to repurpose this braid into something that's going to be really awesome. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna show you um, on my counter, kitchen counter, here's the part of the original braid. And you can see one of the redeeming qualities about this braid is that it has some really beautiful deep um, reds in it. And then in some of the other areas, there's this really cool like neon yellow kind of color. And then here and there interspersed, it's kind of muddled with the gray um, in between the colors. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been separating out by color. I have the reds in the pile right here. And I've got the neon yellows in a pile. And then I kind of have been taking the middle chunks and just setting them aside um, over here. So... What I'm planning to do is to take each of these colors, so like the red by itself is pretty blah. I mean, it's a really, it's a nice red, but there's a lot of white in here, so it's gonna um, mute the red a lot when I put it through the drum carter, which is what I'm planning on doing with these. But I've been collecting some silks, and um, one of the things that I have are these really beautiful um, Tussa and Mulberry silk in these gorgeous fire colors, which immediately made me think of a um, beautiful match made in heaven between this Polworth and the silk because they do have um, very complementary colors. And so what is gonna be cool about this is that the silk is really going to dress up the Polworth. It's gonna give it some new life. It's gonna add some more depth and um, a deeper color to what I already have. Okay, sorry for the, the dark quality of this, you guys, but I just wanted to show you, I have laid out my bat and in kind of a gradient. Um, this is gonna be my base, so I always put that in its gradient first. And then these are my um, fibers that are gonna go on top of the base. I've got the BFL locks, the merino top, the silk, uh, more silk, some little random yellow fiber I found, and then some white silk for the top. Um, and I'm going to lay the gray down as a base first, and then I'm going to do a gradient between these two on the drum carter. Okay, so um, to start our gradient on the drum, I'm going to start with the fluorescent yellow and just kind of um, put it through one side and then I'm going to take a little bit of the red and put it through on the other half and I'm just going to kind of keep going back and forth between these two things um, and you'll see the colors start to go to show up on the carter. overlapping just a little bit in the middle so that I get a little bit of an uh, start getting a little bit of an orange in there and I just keep adding my yellow to the one side and then I go to the red on the other side until I have used all of the pieces of each color And if the red um, travels up into the yellow, that's okay. That's actually a good thing because um, it's going to blend the colors a little bit better. If you do that. And now it's going to go back to yellow. So you see the yellow creeping back over. And that just helps it look more gradient-like. And I'm not going for a perfect gradient. I just want kind of a slow, um, slow uh, merge of colors. Okay, so you can see now I've got my gradient on the drum and it's nice as a base, 
but it doesn't give me the wow factor that I want. This, If I took this off now, it would just kind of be a dull, dull yellow, dull red. Um, so this is where I'm going to take these items that I have um, set out in a gradient that I showed you before, and I'm going to layer them on top of the base that I started with. So first I'm going to take some of this really bright red merino, and it looks absolutely beautiful when it starts blending with the red Polworth. And immediately you start getting a little bit more of a wow factor. So I'm going to put a little bit more of that on. Okay. Now, on the other side, I'm going to take some of this um, really bright yellow Tussa Silk and I'm going to put this through on the side of the yellow. And again, you can see right away that bright pop of color really makes a huge difference. So now I'm going to take a piece of this mulberry silk that has some of the um, reds and orange and a lot of the colors that I want. And I'm actually going to paint this right onto the drum. And you can see as I'm going up the silk, I'm moving over so that I'm putting the lighter, <coughs> putting the lighter um, orange closer to the yellow. And I do want a little bit of crossover with the red so that it's not quite as stark. But then I've got a little bit of kind of an orangey um, BFL that I'm gonna put through. And these lamb locks are a little bit, <coughs> I think a little bit extra for the Carter to run through and I'm not going super fast. I'm just kind of letting those catch on. Okay, so that kind of blends them together. Now I'm going to run the red merino through on this side again. To kind of reinforce my colors and then I'll put the fluorescent yellow through on the other side. And this is kind of my favorite part. So I'm taking this um, little bit of silk noil and just running it along the top of the drum, letting it go and tie all of those colors together. And as many of you probably know, the silk noils can be a bit finicky as far as staying on your bat when you pull it off. So what I like to do is um, take another fiber, like this white silk, which I wanted to feature in the top of the bat, and just run it through over the top. A little bit of my red silk left, so I'm gonna run that a little bit over as well. 